Thank you, Madhura and uh, Dendra. Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let me welcome all of you to the discussion forum on insurance industry. Especially, let me welcome Dr. Jagat Talvis, resource person for the day. Um, well, today the discussion is twofold. Initially, Dr. Alvis will be speaking on the topic insurance career potentials in the new normal. And it is followed by a discussion. And then we will have some questions from the audience as well via the Zoom platform. Then, uh, so today the insurance industry is one of the industries that is uh, discussed mostly, especially during the last few years, the insurance industry has been doing exceptionally well. On one hand, in the general insurance sector, the because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the claims has been reduced, therefore the profit margins have increased. And on the other hand, in the life insurance industry or the sector, the new businesses have improved due to the alarming health concerns raised by the COVID-19. And if I bring some numbers to the table, Sri Lankan insurance industry is a rupees 200 billion worth industry in terms of gross written premium. And if you look at the penetration rates, unfortunately, in 2019, it was around 1.31%. And there is a slight surge in 2020, maybe due to COVID-19, and now it is standing at 1.39% in 2000, by the end of 2020. And Sri Lanka is a, a US dollars 3,700 per capita income country. Where if I compare it with a similar country like Indonesia, where they have the same sort of per capita income, Indonesia is having 3.23% insurance penetration rate. So having 1.39% penetration rate in Sri Lankan in the insurance industry, we are bringing US dollars 1 billion worth of income. So if we could increase at least by 2% in the next two years to come, again, one, another US dollars 1 billion will be added to our GDP. So there is a huge potential in the insurance industry to grow and to serve and to add some value to the GDP also. So with that note, let me introduce or let me invite Dr. Jagat Talvis to learn us through the topic, the insurance, insurance industry or the insurance career potentials in the new normal. Over to you, sir. Very good morning to all of you. Let me congratulate the Department of Finance and the Finance Students Association to, in, to organize and present this investment week. Uh, I believe we are referring to investing you. Anybody is thinking investing, they think about financial investment, but I think what we should concentrate here, investment in you, how could you invest in you, is nothing but education. Number two is also nothing but the education. But number three investment is quite different. It's also education. So this as students, as young generation, what we have to do is when you think about investment, think about Investing in education, that's your best investment and you will get the harvest very soon. That's another unique thing today. You know, I am a graduate from science faculty of same university and I passed out in uh, 40 years back. That can, you can touch my age, but I entered the university at... <coughs> It's, uh, when I walk in today, uh, try to go through my memory lane, but I was lost in that memory lane because 
after the science faculty building, the medical center and the library, all these areas were jungle. So today it has converted to a beautiful university with lot of facilities. So I'm sure you, will, you are the people who could get harvest on that investment by the government. To celebrate the, our 40th, uh, after we meet 40, uh, 40 years, that is three years back, so we came to the university to do a, uh, a shoot about where we were earlier, things which we have done, the student center, canteen, science faculty, but we have not gone beyond the science faculty for all of us to see what has the development taken place. Then I would like to mention about Dr. Chatura Lienage. When I came to know Chatura, he was the president of the Finance Students Association and they have the financial forum. So he, he came up to me and to Dr. Kotalawal at that time for a sponsorship. So we gave a sponsorship to him and finally he'll end up doing a job as a lecturer, a fantastic lecturer at one of the educational institutions where I am heading. So since then actually I am very close to Chatura and when he invited me, I couldn't say no. And uh, thank you very much Chatura to invite me, uh, which is a great opportunity for me to talk to the students of the faculty. And I remember the he was invited to, to speak at the, the accounting forum and he said the accounting journal which they have published, one day it will be like the Harvard Management Journal. So I think the people have to think like that. That's his thinking as a student. At the day of the forum, on my way, to the BMICH, I read the papers, front page, Kalania University, students of science faculty and the students of uh, arts faculty, a big fight. And students are running, the police have come and things like that. And then again, in a singular newspaper, some issues at uh, Rajarata University. There was no photograph, there was only article in the front page. Then I asked the audience, these are the two news items in the papers today. But all these newspapers have missed the most important university activity in the country on that day, that is the f accounting forum organized by the students at BMICH, where the participation was almost uh, all top companies have sent their financial experts and the students did presentations and the experts did presentation. I think the press has not picked up that information. That's something very unique in Sri Lanka. We always want to be very negative person or get anger to you, read the newspapers. From there onwards, I would like to say how I selected the insurance field. So there were no forums like this, information gathering events like this, when we were studying and even if there were, I, I wouldn't have get opportunity because I was in the science faculty. But if I tell, it's by accident. Nothing, nobody has guided me. My parents are not even uh, happy about it. My father is a financial, accounting person, he said, no, 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 if you are doing this, why do you want to go to insurance? Then, uh, but in that advertisement for trainees at National Insurance, they said we have to do the chartered account, chartered insurance institute examination, ACII, FCII, and a big story. Then I thought, okay, look, this is something special. Why should I do chartered accountancy or CIMA? I have to do something new. 
or continue with my studies in my field that is the science uh, subjects and uh, there's no harm in doing it because I have so many professors so many doctors all over the world from our batch who have done very well by continuing the studies in that particular area but I want to do something different and then my father gave permission okay you do it you join it but you continue your CIMA exams I thought it's okay not a bad idea so whilst joining and whilst doing the Chartered Insurance Institute exam I also did SIMA I got a support because I have done science so to get little bit of management and things like that so it has helped me a lot from there onwards I never look back so I became an associate of Chartered Insurance Institute within a very short period at that time probably I am the person who got the associateship in the fastest uh, to be two or three years and then the fellowship you have to specialize in something so I specialized in reinsurance everybody asked oh don't do it because reinsurance there were only two companies national insurance company and Sri Lanka insurance so you there are only two posts and there are enough good people to hold that position but why do you want to do reinsurance then I realized no I do reinsurance because I had a niche about international relationship and you know traveling and stuff like that so what happened there was nobody to support me there's only one gentleman called by the name Mr. Nimal Pereira who used to give me reinsurance journals he was a reinsurance manager at SLIC he used to send me after he reading reinsurance journal to me for me to get a little bit of experience about what's happening in the world so it was the toughest time uh, but I got my fellowship in that area and they're probably the first person to specialize in reinsurance in Sri Lanka and maybe from the whole of Asia there are very few people who has done it so I got a lot of opportunities outside Sri Lanka and in Sri Lanka but I have decided to be in Sri Lanka and I joined Selinko Insurance in 1988 as insurance manager from there I elevated to the deputy general manager uh, and then to the board uh, then uh, also giving other responsibilities uh, heading the education sector and these are the things which I got uh, I think based on my experience and expertise in insurance I have actually traveled 96 countries and uh, it was end of 2019 96 countries but uh, uh, my plan was to complete 100 last year but uh, couldn't do it and I'm not sure whether I could do it in this year also because I realize scoring a century is not an easy thing sometimes you struck at 90s so it has happened to me <laughs> and uh, so that's a lot of experience then I became the association president Sri Lanka Insurance Association and I have supported many universities to start insurance related degrees and that one uh, particularly uh, Sabaragamu University we have started uh, Vyamba and Sabaragamu I think I'm supporting both of them and Sabaragamu University they have only 16 students in the first batch so they uh, are trying to struggling to get the internship to them because since I have initiated I have supported uh, uh, then I can't say no to it I said I'll take all 16 and they were so well and all 16 they were offered jobs after their graduation I said not before their graduation you have to wait till they complete their finals otherwise when you see money you think okay that's that's all so I took all then in 
next year they have 25. Then the one uh, Mr. Asika, who was a very, very uh, Asika Devendra uh, keen, and he said, sir, I don't think uh, you could get anybody because all other companies have booked them. I said, that's what I want. I want to create a demand and, and I have done it. So what else? And some of those people who are joined us are in, uh, very senior as uh, some of them are technic uh, s chief technical managers. Some are working in overseas, our overseas companies, uh, overseas affiliated companies. So insurance have a lot of potential, lot of areas. But very unfortunately, when you call insurance, you will meet only the insurance agent. So you, you all think, the general public, insurance agent is all about insurance. So we to change the perception of insurance agent, we, uh, now there is an examination to be done to become an insurance agent. This is the conducted by Sri Lanka Insurance Institute. Try to elevate them a little bit. And to get, there's a qualification also, uh, where to, uh, uh, to enter the entry qualification also and which we probably will increase in the future, giving some uh, recognition and dignity. Those days I remember my fisherman was also an insurance agent. Sir, and he, without even knowing, I am also working for another insurance company. So now the things are different and in over the years we are trying to get this to uh, a different level. And there are 45,000 insurance agents working in Sri Lanka. And there are at least another 10,000 insurance people who are selling insurance working in insurance companies. They are not agents, they are executives, they are via the company attire, the tie, and you know, they have a time to work. So they are a different category of people. But a lot of insurance companies when they are supporting for university programs, they are trying to grab the good people to sell insurance. Because, uh, because they need good people to sell insurance. But other than insurance, there are the 45,000 agents and people who are selling. There are 19,000, almost 20,000 people are working in the insurance industry in different categories. <coughs> One is they are doing underwriting. Underwriting. At, uh, that is why the person who evaluate the risk and they accept the risk and decide the rates and things like that for underwriting. And at Selimco Insurance, we have actually changed that. We said business risk analyst. The reason is some of these underwriters, uh, they said uh, this uh, designation is uh, it's not good uh, because when the young people, when we go to marriage, when they ask the other party, what is the job? They say underwriting. So they don't see any difference between underwriting and undertakers. So we change it. Dignified job. Risk analyst. And actually that's their job. <laughs> that has been, that's their job where the people will understand, they will analyze the risk and you take it. Then you would need a lot of technical skills for that. To analyze the risk. And f I can give you a, there are a lot of uh, areas uh, you will uh, get to know. You should know to be an underwriter or the risk analyst. And he, the last Monday we got a query from a foreign company, a film producing company who has decided to come to Sri Lanka and do a film and they want a comprehensive film producers insurance package. So we have to identify which are the areas they are exposed to, 
uh, first of all, I was not uh, even convinced why are they coming to Sri Lanka to do a shoot a film. And uh, probably anyway, La Sri Lanka will get some money in dollars. And some Sri Lankan uh, supporting staff will get opportunity to act in that field. Not a bad idea. But then they get a lot of things like their people could injured. Uh, their cameras and sophisticated equipment could get damaged. And then they could be delayed the film. And they will lose the scheduling. Uh, they lose the income like a con loss and also the liabilities towards third parties the government has government has given okay you have to do this 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 to fulfill so you have to analyze that they could damage the jungle maybe so they could damage the property around so a lot of things uh, uh, could happen not like the Sri Lankan teledrama producers just get a camera and they go with all due respect to them. They have done wonderful job with that, but it's much more professional job. And they have a product, uh, project manager, uh, the project financer, a lot of uh, very professional. Uh, uh, actually, I'm learning at even, I'm learning how they are going to produce a film, how they are going to make a film in Sri Lanka. And so many films have been uh, taken, have done in Sri Lanka. Uh, I think uh, the bridge over river choir that's one of the best and it's academic award uh, winning field so things have changed uh, uh, what will happen our people will get uh, exposed to COVID and if they get COVID any questions so are you going to pay how are you going to pay what's the cost of quarantine in Sri Lanka and so many questions what's the medical facilities uh, whether they will be, uh, if they have to uh, airlift them to another country, will you pay for it? And they want to increase, uh, include that. So it's, you have to analyze, work with them. So finally, I can do a little bit of uh, film producing also with from the things which I learned. Uh, so much of things. So you have to go into the, you can go to factory, you have to go into the, and process. What is the process? What's the risk area? What's the materials you uh, stock how could be uh, a, a ignition could take place are you uh, stocking the materials in the proper place so there to underwriters or to risk assessors to support they we have risk engineers they have basically done engineering chemical engineers uh, mechanical engineers they have done the engineering part so they will support you with the knowledge and once you underwrite a business, then you go into a different uh, job. You have to service your clients, the IT. You have to be very uh, fluent in uh, IT and the software packages we're using. And the next important thing is claims management. Claims management is one. Claim adjusting is one. Claims management is you manage the claim with the support of the loss suggester who assess the claim. So there are opportunities for that. The next opportunity. As some of the graduates are there handling claims at Selling for Insurance, uh, other companies as well. So this is another area where you could get exposed. A lot of people think the most prestigious thing is to be in the reinsurance department because they get a lot of training from your insurance companies. There are a lot of uh, uh, opportunity to work with other companies, uh, overseas companies. And probably they must have even looking at me also, this guy got into reinsurance and that's how he came up, uh, not because of any skills of him, because he was supported by so many reinsurance companies and things like that. So that's another area. Then the technical areas, so there are technical managers who will coordinate all these things and take some take decisions. That's very important. The technical managers, they should have the claims experience. They should have when when a new business come like the yesterday I said the film producers uh, business. So I had to call few technical people, form a committee and discuss. They ask various questions that this and the technical area. Uh, 
So those are the basic areas. Then you go to the general management, and your degree you cover a lot of uh, areas in general management, and those are the opportunities available in insurance. As uh, the previous speaker very correctly said, it's a growing industry, about 200 million US dollars, and uh, it's uh, a growing industry. We have 27 insurance companies, live and unlive, and the brokers, 71 insurance brokers. And as I said, uh, 20,000, uh, almost 20,000 employees who are working in the industry. Sometimes there are people working uh, not directly in the insurance companies or brokering companies, outside giving support services. And the other important area in the insurance sector is the investment. The funds you collect, you have to invest in properly. And for that, you need the investment expert, the financial experts, also should be supported by some of the people, the staff members who are a good knowledge of uh, insurance. Because they are, they are the experts who know when you need money, when you need money, when you are going to pay claims, you have to plan that, your cash flow. So that's another area. So there are a lot of opportunities. But don't think about sales only. But the people who are selling in the companies, I mean, not the agents, I think if you take our companies, we have at least general insurance, at least 10 our sales executives who are getting more than 1 million income. Agents, out of 45, there are many. But whilst you working in our company, everything is your car, your cell phone you are using, everything it depends on your sales volume. And uh, before the directors, few years back, three sales officers, they got BMWs. Because if they are not there, how can directors can't even go in a three-wheeler? So we have that respect. A lot of people like, rather than become an agent, to be a, join a company and getting a, uh, getting a uh, sales executive job is more recognized. Recognize. You are working in the company. At the same time, there are a lot of graduates when we are hearing the success stories of uh, a lot of uh, graduates who are working as agents, and most of the people who are very well organized are the graduates. They have their computer systems in place. They know the renewals. They know everything. So it's, they are organized themselves to a different level. But I know a girl. Uh, she has represented Sri Lanka in many times in USA. That's a sales conference of all agents. Uh, you had qualified for that. And she has 10 people working in her, in her office. Her office is at Horton Place. Why is that? She has so much of business, she can't handle it. She recruit one person. And all of them are get decent salaries. But they are to call in their clients, attend into their issues, make sure the payments are going on time. And she also have, out of 10, she has an uh, accountant also. So her income, I didn't ask. You know, it's not nice to ask the uh, uh, income of a lady. So, but I can gather what is this all about. But that's her life. And her question is, her problem is, when I am not there, who's going to do this? Who will service my clients? So that's, she's worrying about that. So I said, do whatever you can do now. Somebody will take it over, your son or your daughter, or whoever will take it over. But they are not interested now. Maybe probably the perception they have uh, about the insurance sales people. But in our company, and most of our companies have changed, the insurance agents, we don't call them agents, we call them consultants or financial and insurance consultants. We have changed that as well to be more uh, comfortable and they are dignified. So now, uh, 
the things are changing, more and more professionalism can, is ca coming to the industry. So I believe that it's the Yuala can get an edge over others if you all join insurance companies. And particularly when you get, uh, when you get uh, the internship, you will realize, okay, who's going to get what? What's the job? And in our company, one uh, commitment is we always try to give the uh, a graduate a recruitment in the same area to start with. So you live with your parents, you do a job, you know the problems of the clients in that area, but gradually you transfer to a different division uh, when you are going up in the ladder. So it's something uh, a unique uh, in insurance industry. But if you take, if you join a bank, people still think banks are the top and you know. But I have my batchmates who are joint management trainees at the bank. They also have done well, but only one person I know has become a CEO of, of a bank. That also somebody from Kalania University. So by the time you have to be this number of years, the bank unions, they decide the salaries, they have a scheme. But insurance, that's not so. If you perform well, you can go up very fast. And that, I think it's worth mentioning his name. He's also from the Commerce Faculty of Kalania, Mr. Lucky De Silva, who, who just retired at the DFCC as the, uh, as the uh, CEO, director CEO. And uh, we played uh, cricket together. Uh, that's why he's so close to me. And all others have come very well up to AGM, DGM level but got a lot of foreign jobs with a little bit of experience, a lot of foreign jobs uh, done very well in their life. But uh, you had to go through the banking uh, system uh, for salaries, unions, uh, and insurance. Uh, there's no trade unions, but there are other welfare societies and so many things. Uh, but there are no trade unions who will dictate how can you give him a promotion over the other person he has experienced? All these things are not there. It's a management decides, and management always takes the correct decision. You otherwise, it will you have to suffer. The company has to suffer. So this is a little bit of the insurance industry. I would like to say it's a very not a boring job. Every day you meet somebody with a different problem. Everybody, I can tell another example. Some importers have asked, uh, marine cargo insurance, you all must have done. Uh, there is a, once the cargo arrived in Sri Lanka, is we allow 60 days storage. 60 day storage cover. Uh, One person asks, I want to extend this, sir. I'll pay, I will extend this. I asked, why? No dollars to send. I said, ah, that's true. But is it a marine risk? You know dollars to pay, it's not a marine risk. It's not a marine risk. Marine policy will give, provide you to storage, to clear, and to documentation and various things. A 60 days maximum, but if you have no dollars, uh, first pay the premium to us for 60 days. After that, we can't help because people who will come, only the people who have imported perishable things. Anyway, after 60 days, those stuff will be perished. Somebody is importing TVs, washing machines, will never ask that cover. So we will be be selection against the insurance company. And also, we have a very strong insurance association of Sri Lanka who take a lot of decisions uh, together. And I was uh, one of the past presidents and still in the committee. 
and uh, today is the executive committee meeting. I'll have to skip that because of this function. Uh, I have a good excuse. The meeting was for last Wednesday and just postponed to this Wednesday. I said sorry, then I have already fixed this. And then you have the Association of Insurance and Reinsurers of Developing Countries, <coughs> AIRDC. I think that even the university can become a member of that association as an associate member. You get a lot of information. And there are about developing countries. 90% of the countries are developing countries. And maybe after COVID, the developed countries, some of them will be also fall into this category. Uh, developing countries. Uh, when I uh, got the membership of the, uh, the presidency of that association, the headquarters is in Philippines. I try to identify what do you mean by developing country. Is it by is it by uh, per capita income? No, it's designed by somebody. Or oh, no, you are a developing country. You are a developed country. Believe me, even China, Russia are developing countries, and small European countries are developed countries. So somebody decides it. So we have no choice. Uh, India. All three countries, but India doesn't want to say we are a developing country. So we are doing well. We don't want to become a member. We are uh, we are a developing country. I said developing, not develop. So that's their pride. But China and Russia, they accepted the fact. It's not the uh, per capita income. If the per capita income, if you take country like Mauritius or Seychelles, the per capita income is very high. Are they not a developing country? Develop, they are a developing country, not a developed country. So somebody decides it. I don't want to tell who decides it. Uh, they decide most of the things. So they de decide who is developing country, who is developing country, who is underdeveloped countries. So anyway, we are a developing country. We are at a very uh, high level. Uh, that's about... Uh, with that opportunity, actually, I get. I also got to travel to many countries. There was an election to select the president. Sri Lanka is a small country. People think, why you want somebody from a country like Sri Lanka to be our president? They are a big organization. That we, so, but finally, uh, I managed to got it. And even the countries uh, who was planning to compete with me. I managed to get them to propose me and second me. I think Chaturu was at ANC at that time, uh, if I'm correct, uh, when I got. Uh, so it's about the insurance in the industry. Then I would like to, if you have time, I would like to mention some small thing. If you ask a youngster, what are you planning to do? What's your future? May Indra have a sir? Migrate, you know. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. But yesterday I was at a wedding and so many, uh, I told Chatru also, uh, the boy is from ANC, which I am chairman, and the girl is from ICBT, where I am the chairman, and a lot of young kids were there. Uh, young youngsters when they're talking to them. One other guy, sir, Canada, Dalatini, sir, Hambe, Lagadi. Australia, sir, everything okay, sir. And there are only two people <laughs> who wants to do something in Sri Lanka. But in my opinion, Sri Lanka is a best, blessed country. Very, very blessed country. We had a War over 33 years. And I am a nearly victim when the bomb explosion at Selinko, uh, in front, uh, Central Bank, we are in front of that. So I remember when we are running around, we had to jump over some dead bodies. And we had the guts to wait and see whether that person is living or not. That experience. A lot of people say migrate and calls from there, calls from here, but we didn't. But after 33 years, 
Throughout my life, we have experienced this. But what happened? That's why I said it's a blessed country. And uh, these problems will be there. And you can't find a country where there's no COVID affected country. There's no country not affected by international terrorism. There's no country affected by climatic change and the insurance, you must know it better. And there's no country where there's economic downfall. And we also, we are sometimes we are leading the game, but we are there. So don't think uh, any of you all, you have a qualification, it's fine, thank, great, thanks to your senior lecturers, professors, fair faculty, you, you get a great qualification. I don't think somebody is waiting to give you a job. Because they have, many people in that country has lost their jobs. You have to do two, three jobs to survive. Will you do that in Sri Lanka? Will you do that in Sri Lanka? Two, three jobs, coming home, and the husband and wife will not even see each other because when the husband is there, wife is there, husband has gone for the second job. So those are the things, and they are willing to do that in some other country, being a second class or third class citizen. But here, all of you are first class citizens. But why can't you do that? But if somebody asks, the one of these guys asks, sir, what do you think a good business to start? There were a lot of people around who wants to migrate. I said, you, the best business today is homes for age. Homes for age is the best business. If I allow a business to start, I start a superb home for age. Why? People are migrated. They are sending money. But who's look after their parents? Who give their, talk to them? So they have money, but they have lost everything. But they have brought up these students for a particular level for them to be, to them to migrate. But some, some youngsters are, they are very nice. They get their parents also. Uh, that is to, for them to do the LLB. You know, Lamai ke Lamai Balagan, Ari Adari. Egole Indaki, you know, Kanda Bundari, Lokumagalari Agan, no, me Tata Mehina, but I'm Mehina, I'm Mehina, but Tata Mehina, have a good internet, me in a kid at Animo Gomidin. So that's why I said this is a social crisis in Sri Lanka. Very serious social crisis in Sri Lanka. But in the other hand, this is not insurance. But I'm saying because these guys will get, can easily get an opportunity to migrate. Uh, and some people study not to do a job. Uh, I know since I'm delivering, uh, working with foreign universities, uh, Chatura and all also. First question they ask, uh, if we do this, can we migrate? I said, you have to ask that from the immigration officer. Sorry, the <laughs> visa officers, how do I know? But if you are having a qualification, you can match with anybody in the world. Think about it. So this is a crisis. And uh, for your team, the faculty team, I have a one message. With your four-year degree, you can easily get affiliated to the Chartered Insurance Institute London. That's supposed to be the highest qualification in the insurance, most recognized but not to migrate, to work here. And migration is different. Working and coming back, that's allowed. Or going for studies, that's allowed. Going for studies and staying there, it's something uh, not that uh, good. But actually, there are a lot of professionals doing extremely well. If you go to America, they are doing better than Sri Lankans, the Americans at NASA and various places. They are doing extremely well. We are very bright but give that contribution to Sri Lankan economy. 
give that contribution to your future. That's why I said, if you can't get this affiliated, after two years, probably they need minimum two subjects to do. That is English law and some other subject. Uh, with that, actually, you get the... Otherwise, you have to pay about a million for the course fees and things like that. There, uh, you could do it. Uh, I think I'm sure uh, you all will work towards it. I'll give the contacts. Write to them. Send your curriculum. Get exemptions. Then you can tell your students before they enter, this uh, opportunity is also there. That is something uh, I think uh, you have to work. And you can uh, do the examination at uh, Sri Lanka Insurance Institute and places like that. Do that exam just as a practice before you do the chartered. But when you do your degree program in four years, I think that's nothing. That's nothing. You will set for your life. And also, I'm not a person who's anti-migration, but think about one thing. Who can change this country? Do you think the politician will change? Do you think the so many other people, IMF and China and all these people will change this country? No. Only you can change it. You can change it. That should be in your heart. I will be here. Together, you all can change the future of us. And actually, we are, to take our age, we are, we are and if you all are familiar with cricket, we are in the uh, batting power play. Batting power play. Only five more overs to play. <laughs> but you all are at the top level. So you can, you can change it. You can change the match and jointly change it. Think about it. Let's be here. Let's suffer. Let's work for it. Prices will go up. Prices will come down. Nobody will change this country. And for example, actually, if you take, before I winding up the speech, before you, uh, when there is the issue, it's a human nature that you move away from the issue. Why do you want to be here? It's a problem. And certain people who move away during the during the terrorism or the conflict time have come back to Sri Lanka and they are doing extremely well. And don't ask me names, but some people have even cancelled their dual citizenships. I won't tell anything. So this is a blessed country. That's why they are coming back. Welcome them, whoever it is, and work with them. And don't forget you all can change the country with your qualifications. What we need is your commitment. Thank you very much and all the best to you. Also, I would like to highlight key points that Dr. brought up uh, during his uh, speech. Uh, one thing he emphasized that Education is a key to the insurance industry. And he nicely broke the glass ceiling where the insurance is a, only a selling business. But he brought up examples also with there are more and enough sectors and enough spheres in the insurance industry to work with. For example, claims management to claims adjustments and technical areas like not only the insurance uh, technical knowledge is important, but also other uh, technical aspects like engineers, doctors may be influencing when it comes to uh, health uh, policies. And also there is general management areas, as well as when it comes to investments, where the finance knowledge is critical. Where you have finance knowledge, you have jobs in the insurance industry as well. And, uh, and also he mentioned how the designations of the employees have been changed to make them esteemed in their job positions. And coming back to Dr. the discussion, let me ask this question. 
Um, now, insurance industry is being revolving over challenges. Now, what do you think the most appealing challenge you have today, as well as to your to your understanding, what would be the main challenge? that would come to the insurance industry in the future, maybe five to 10 years? Yeah, I think uh, presently uh, the main challenge is uh, the income levels of people. So what they, uh, it's not affecting the entire industry. Say for example, somebody would like to take a yeah, motor insurance, take a third party insurance, yeah. and they'll take a health insurance from the balance man he saves. Yeah. So it's, is within the industry so this is something very uh, challenging and the other thing uh, it's like you know <coughs> the reinsurance premium with the dollar crisis the companies cannot send money yeah. that's a very very big challenge and uh, particularly smaller companies so the reinsurance uh, some reinsurers are uh, basically uh, asking what's happening when you are getting our money. So that's the challenge. But other, all other things are opportunities. Okay. Because of the COVID, uh, hmm. uh, uh, and also a lot of uh, people, the industries have not uh, uh, come back to the same level of operation. So they mm -hmm. cut down their insurance premium. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you take uh, the hotel industry, and they couldn't insure most of their properties. Uh, but they didn't understand that they, ins they have to insure because they have to protect their assets mm. during the bad period. Otherwise, they will not have the asset. But they thought there are other priorities. So the change in the perception is a challenging thing. But I think uh, if you take uh, last year, uh, this year, uh, 2021, there's no growth in the industry. It's almost like the same as uh, 2020. But 2020 is also not a good year. 2019 to 2020, there is a big growth. But uh, I think uh, the life insurance is a different ball game altogether. Uh, because uh, one of my uh, friends said, like, uh, when you are, when you are the country is doing well, that's good for insurance. Yeah. When the country is also doing bad, that's yeah. also good for insurance. I remember uh, during the conflict period, all of us uh, have suffered. Actually, 33 years of my life, we have experienced, and some of you all have not even born. Most of you all have not even born. And the terrorism premium was going up drastically terrorism premium. It has come down uh, with the with the Industry. after 2009 uh, said we used to when we meet some of our reinsurers when they ask why this terrorism premium is coming down I said what is terrorism? Are you referring to tourism? <laughs> no terrorism in Sri Lanka only is tourism in Sri Lanka. So we had a time like that actually Tourism was booming, terrorism was going out. So things are changing, the circles are changing, you know, circles. And also sometimes the uh, insurance regulatory, uh, some people actually, the new government, they appointed few, and they don't understand the industry properly. So changing uh, the some rules will affect you. Mm. And a very good thing is like mobile insurance. That is not a insuring your mobile. You are getting your insurance through mobile. And they have uh, said, uh, uh, they have stopped it basically. And they say people don't know, they send a SMS and you get uh, your mobile bill, you cut something. But it's not so. You have to confirm it. Then the mobile operator will ask you who is the nominee in the case of you die. Then you have to give the name, ID card number address and the mobile number of nominee mm. and their perception is they are insulting the Sri Lankans they are saying people will don't understand and then they which they have to send will somebody give your wife's name or daughter's name without knowing for what you are giving so 
and they actually have not realized the people our people are very intelligent you know now uh, i am from dehiwala uh, dehiwala mount levenia the the daily uh, fishing boats going before they come to the show they last call and ask their colleagues on the show mona da ilati na mahadu to be this they said okay lot of thoro malu gorak evilana they will not come they will go to some other place so they are using the mobile for various technical things even the person who's plucking coconut will now climb to a stand then ask so many coconut nuts are there kapanna depa devanna de palaina vattatti kaare again so things have changed things have changed and in the area there is another thing uh, they have only one mobile number at the tele- at the three wheeler st- station mm-hmm. and they are given the number to various people so my mother use it when i am not there then you get a call the first person will go for the job give the phone to the man in the queue that's using technology they are saying these people don't understand our literacy level is very high you can't underestimate uh, the uh, people so these are challenges sometimes uh, without knowing they are changing various things the regulatory risk is very high these days so uh, dr jagat now you have come to a very nice point where the technology has been used in the insurance industry so now we have seen most of the insurance businesses in sri lanka are traditionally born as traditional business insurance businesses and now we see some of the businesses born digital like for example insurmi.lk yeah. now how this technological advancements affect the insurance industry in the future it will it will enhance the business because if you look at properly but if you do obtaining mobile insurance is about two days a uh, 2 rupees per day what the product we offer but today even you can't buy a bd for that amount yeah. and the insurance cover is for 1 million insurance cover is for 1 million the, who are taken this policies three wheeler drivers people in the grassroots level the people like us people like you all uh, farmers uh, three wheelers uh, people they are very well educated they are asking uh, so many questions so they have to take this challenge the digitalization will take place but in insurance always you like to see a face mm, for the trust online insurance online insurance are there but you like sometimes they request mm. somebody to call you through and go to the so that you cannot uh, completely take away the human face mm. from uh, subject like insurance banking you do lot of banking transactions mm-hmm. now but on the other hand during the pandemic period most of our premium was paid through the facilities through mobile and banking channels so things are changing the market executive or the people who sold the business need not to go behind the customer and it's all digitally we could transact so that they can do another business mm-hmm. they have time to meet somebody else yeah. so my perception is digitalization is the key to any industry and insurance is not a exception yes so it helps not only the insurance industry but also other or other industries where it can play with the insurance industry yeah. okay and, and and also if you take uh, the now the mobile technology when you go to uh, inspect a ve- vehicle uh, on the spot why why is this going the call center is uploading the past accidents of and they he take photographs and upload from that point onwards then the call center will is give an estimate of the claim so things have changed and in japan even the estimate they are doing it through computer they take the photo feed the photographs and they'll come out with this has damage this has damage and this is the rough estimate so it doesn't mean the people will be replaced by uh, the technology technology the people who have qualification mm. 
can decide how to use the technology. So with the technology, new jobs also will be created. Yeah, yeah. new jobs will be created. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like you said, there will be no layoffs, but new jobs will be created with the technology. Yeah. And new, new avenues will be found with yes. the technology. And also, actually, I would like to stress uh, for the insurance industry, they have not uh, discontinued any of the employees. Okay. This one industry who has not cut the salaries, who has not cut the bonuses, bonuses maybe one month, something like that, you know, but they have not uh, reduced the employees. Right. They maybe have stopped recruiting employees, okay. new employees, but not reduced the employees. Nobody has lost their jobs uh, because uh, I remember the management, new batch of management trainees, most of them are graduates, right. almost all of them are graduates, and they have only worked three or four days, but they were not, hmm. their salaries were paid, the issue was okay, after that they start working, not only our company, all other companies. Right, um, the audience, if you have any questions again, you can post it through the Zoom platform, so we'll take up questions. Um, so let me ask this question, Dr. Jagat, um, now, I think we discuss different avenues, different spheres in insurance industry. So what is the advice that you would give to a student who are following insurance degree or insurance qualification? Uh, what is the key to the insurance career uh, to develop? Actually, insurance is something uh, like any other job, you have to be very positive. Yes. If you are not positive, you can't do anything. And uh, some of the insurance jobs are uh, 365 days, mm -hmm. you listen to bad things, not good things. Mm -hmm. So if you somebody is handling third party, third party uh, motor claims, every day that's, 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 yes. that's. So you have to be a very strong mind if you are handling claims mm -hmm. like that. But I think with the, uh, they should be a very good team player. Most of the qualified people, what happen is when they come, they said, okay, I know this, I know that. My boss, we only have all level. Mm -hmm. But this circle will change. So you have to work with them. You have to listen to them. You have to be a good team player. Mm -hmm. Not only insurance, any other industry, yeah. you have to be a uh, good team player person, yeah. and very positive team player. Yes, so being, be, being an employee in the insurance industry, two things is key. Being a, having a positive mindset and being work in a team, not only for insurance industry, as uh, Dr. Most Jagat says, most of, the, uh, most of the jobs. So uh, I think we are waiting for any questions from Zoom platform. Um, so since, I would like to uh, yeah. know one point. A lot of people think you have to be have a expert no knowledge of uh, very fluent in English yeah. to get a job. Uh, but I know that in company I'm working, most of the people, young people have joined with little knowledge of English. But they have improved their English okay. while working. But if you take the graduates, they're doing their curriculum in English medium. So they are a step of uh, uh, one step forward. One step forward, the others. And uh, it's. Uh, I remember we have done some presentations on the recruiting management trainees. All local graduates, excellent. So you can't. Uh, their presentation skills are excellent. The questions, how they answer, uh, it's. Uh, that's improved. The, the quality of graduates are improving. So responsive, that's your responsibility and credit should go to your. The graduates today, the level of language and skills are very high. Presentation skills particularly, very high. Yes. Uh, so, so with the absence of the questions, uh, 
So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jagat Talvis, thank you very much for, for being time. here and uh, sparing your valuable time for us <laughs> and educating us on the insurance industry and the careers in the insurance industry, as well as the avenues that the young graduates can improve themselves. And uh, you emphasize the fact that it is not only uh, that you, you can do something in Sri Lanka, like where you can add value uh, to the country as a nation, as well as uh, they can develop themselves in Sri Lanka. So with that note, um, we would like to conclude our discussion on insurance industry. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, sir.